Okay, so um, welcome. This is all about history A level at the Wren. Um, only one of you here, and being a former student of the Wren, we don't need to think about what we studied at GCSE. Uh, I know that all too well at the moment. Um, but we move on today, we're just going to be thinking about um, what the course entails, what the different modules are, what you're going to learn in each of those modules and in the coursework. Um, and then give you a task uh, to do for the next online session with the other history teacher, Mr. Ashforth, and then a task um, to do over the summer for my side of the course um, as well. So, our first unit, this is Mr. Ashforth's unit, so I might be a little shaky on what the content is, um, but it is unit one and it covers Stuart Britain, the crisis of the monarchy, from 1603 to 1702. So it's a big 100 year chunk that you're going to be looking at. Uh, some of the highlights in year 12, you're going to cover from 1603 to 1649. We're going to be thinking about James I and uh, his financial and religious challenges during his reign, um, the relations that James I has with Parliament and how that breaks down. Uh, Charles I and the move towards absolutism. Uh, the idea of the personal rule. Again, these are all concepts that I'm a little bit shaky on. Um, so if you do have any questions about these, please put them towards Mr. Ashforth in the second session. Um, we've got political and religious upheaval and descent into civil war. So if you are a um, early modernish historian and you like the civil war era, this is a great unit for you. Um, you've got the civil war itself and the growth of popular radicalism. And then you finish off that unit with the trial and execution of Charles I. So that's what covers year 12. And in year 13, we go from 1649 to 1702. We look at Cromwell and the protectorate, uh, the Republican experiment um, and Cromwell's rule, the restoration of the monarchy and Charles II, uh, the political battles that are happening, the Whigs and the Tories and the growth of these political parties, uh, fears of Catholic succession and James I, moving on to the Glorious Revolution and the introduction of a Bill of Rights um, and the foundations for what we have now as a constitutional monarchy, and then finally the Act of Settlement and the end to the Stuarts. So that's just a brief overview of what your study in this module. In terms of what this looks like, is uh, you've got um, the exam. It's gonna be three different questions that you need to answer. The first is gonna be an extract question. Um, so with this particular paper, it makes you focus on interpretations. Uh, it requires you to consider and analyze the arguments of three different historians on a particular topic. Um, so whereas in this module, it's interpretations when we move on, we we'll look at mine and that's all to do with sources as well. Uh, so you've got that competing idea of interpretations and sources. You'll need to use your own knowledge uh, to evaluate each of these three extracts as well. Uh, you then have a choice of two out of three essay questions, each worth 25 marks. These questions each span a period of roughly 20 to 30 years and ask you to consider an argument surrounding one of the key topics. Uh, you'll need to consider multiple sides of an argument, like you would in any good historical uh, essay. Think about multiple sides of the argument using specific and detailed knowledge to help you reach a valid conclusion. Um, again, I'm a little too shaky on Stuart Britton, so if you do have any questions, please ask Mr. Ashforth. Moving on to my side of the unit, uh, we look at the American dream. Uh, so the idea of the American dream, reality and illusion from 1945 to 1980. This, um, well, I find this easier um, in the way it's broken down. So in year 12, we look at 1945 to 1963. And it's nice and easy to remember. Um, it's essentially the presidents, the presidencies of Truman, Eisenhower, and then Kennedy as well. Uh, we break that down even further, so we look at the domestic policy of each of those, 
we look at the foreign policy of each of those presidents and the civil rights policy of each of those presidents. Uh, we also look at the impact of the baby boom and economic growth of the 1950s. Um, one of my favorite things in the Eisenhower years, the introduction of McDonald's and Ray Kroc um, and what he does to essentially boost the economy of the US. Um, and then we sort of finish off year 12 by thinking about how big is America as a world power by 1963? Is it at the peak of its power? Has it dipped slightly? Has it grown from 1945 onwards? In year 13, we then, again, we look at four different presidencies, um, but in three different sections. So we look at the presidency of LBJ, so Johnson. We then look at Nixon's presidency, and then we lump uh, Ford and Carter together, even though they're different presidents, but because they serve such short terms. Uh, we essentially do the same. We look at foreign policy of each, domestic policy of each, and civil rights policy of each. Um, but in this year 13 side, you get to look at this escalation and then eventual withdrawal from Vietnam. Um, you've got the Watergate crisis under Nixon, uh, which historians will argue is the end of the so-called American dream when Nixon um, lies and cheats to become president again. And then we think about how much of a world power is America after the 19, um, after 1980. We look at some key figures. I mean, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X for civil rights, uh, the presidents, their cabinets, their governments, uh, vice presidents. So yeah, I really like this module. Uh, I think there's a lot here and it, it covers a broad range of topics for what, if depending on what you're interested in. This one is similar in how it's assessed uh, to unit one. The only real difference is that question one is a source question. So it's still worth 30 marks and it requires you to consider and analyze the utility. So much like those GCSE questions that are about uh, how useful are sources A and B, it's a similar question to that, um, but it requires you to think a bit differently, thinking about the tone even of some of the uh, sources as well. Um, so it'll be for a specific inquiry as well. So it'll focus on one of the presidents um, and something that they did or a policy of theirs. Um, and you'll need to use your contextual knowledge to assess the utility and how useful these three sources would be for that particular inquiry. You then again have a choice of two or three essay questions. Each is worth 25 marks. Um, the questions to tend to focus on one of the key topics, so either the domestic policy, the foreign policy, or the civil rights po policy, and they will often refer to one or multiple presidencies. Um, so it might just be something to do with the foreign policy of Eisenhower, or it might be to do with the foreign policy from Truman all the way through to Kennedy. Um, so you get a wide range of questions here that you can focus on. Uh, this is about using your own knowledge to engage in a certain historical debate surrounding the time period. Um, so these are some really in-depth questions and it allows you, that choice allows you as well to focus and really get um, the grade that you deserve by picking the question that is going to best suit you. So these are our two examined unit, we, uh, units. We then move on to the coursework or the NEA. Um, so we choose to look at Russia from 1855 to 1964. This is going to be mainly student led, um, so it's going to be a lot of your own research, but if you haven't got any idea what Russia uh, is about during these years, we do spend a couple of lessons going over the content and a quick overview of Russia for these above years. Uh, we then spend so several lessons looking at some key themes uh, and topics for questions. So thinking about maybe individuals, maybe ideologies, etc. The whole point of the coursework is again for you to engage in a historical debate. Um, so you'll come up with your own question and your own research that surrounds a certain debate to do with Russia. So it might be to um, how much was Lenin the driving force for political change or something along those lines where historians would argue 
it was Lenin. Other historians would argue the main driving force would be Stalin in these years. Um, so there's this real debate around it, and it's a nice bit of history for you to get your teeth stuck into. If you don't like Russia, or you have an interest in something else, um, we are open to the idea of you picking a different topic. One of the girls uh, this year is doing her coursework on the suffragette movement and uh, women gaining rights. This does mean that you'll have less guidance uh, from myself and Mr. Ashforth, but again, if it's something that you're interested in, and as long as it fits um, with the other two units and meets the criteria that the exam board want, there isn't anything from stopping you doing that, but Russia will be able to guide you and help you um, with that. In terms of what this looks like, it's about a 4,000 word essay uh, that you would need to complete on a question of your choice. Again, it's all you that is gonna be driving this. Um, you will need to engage in this wider historical debate surrounding the time. Uh, you'll need to use your source analysis skills and your interpretation skills throughout this essay as well. So it needs to cover 100 years. You need to be talking about each decade um, of these 100 years as well. And throughout that, you need to have three sources, so things from the time, and two different interpretations that you're interweaving into your argument and you can use to support or uh, challenge the question that you have picked. So, nice quick overview of um, the course. What I would like you to do, so Mr. Ashworth has asked the task for next lesson, uh, is simply unit one, Stuart Britton. He's going to be taking a bit of an introduction into next session. I'd like you uh, to research the social, economic and political situation in England at the end of the reign of Elizabeth I. This is going to be used for the task next week. Um, so it's really important that you get on with this and you understand that situation. Um, some key questions that you might need to think about for next week were how strong a position was England in as a country by the end of the reign of Elizabeth I, and what were some of the major challenges it faced? So that's the next lesson. Um, I won't see you until September, but it's important that for my side of the course, we get a little bit of research done as well. So a task for the summer um, for the American Dream Unit is researching that context behind 1945 America. Um, so some key things that you could focus on is the lives of black people and how does this change from uh, the Civil War and the Emancipation uh, Proclamation all the way through until World War II. Uh, how does the lives of the working class change during this period? What are some political differences facing America? Um, think about the differences between the South and the North and how they might vote and then America as a world power. Is it a world power in 1945? Um, or is it, spoilers, quite an isolationist country? Okay, so thank you. All right, stop the recording, fingers crossed. How was that, Thomas? Makes sense? It, it's not, honestly. Um, it, the beginning, it, it takes a little to get your head around um, to do with the, the political ideologies, but you get yourself into it quite quickly. It's not that difficult. Um, yeah, 4,000 does sound like a lot, but you have so much time to be working on this. Um, and, well, knowing you, I think that once you get into it, 4,000 almost seems quite restrictive.